On the Lower East Side of Manhattan, just next to the base of the Brooklyn Bridge, sits this unassuming three-story building. It doesn't look all that special, especially when tucked in between all the taller, newly remodeled apartments and office buildings surrounding it. But upon closer inspection, you'll find that 279 Water Street houses some of the oldest and most notorious history in New York. Welcome to Bridge Cafe. One of the few wooden structures left in the area, Bridge Cafe sits at 279 Water Street in New York, just about a block from the bay and the slips of the pier. It's a bit difficult to find among the cobblestones of the waterfront, but once found, it will make your time spent finding it worth the while. We asked the manager, Adam, to tell us about the Bridge Cafe and to give us some of its more ignoble history. The building dates back to 1794. Yes. And uh, you were telling me earlier, so, so it was built in 1794, and what was it initially? It was built in, in 1794, and it was actually leased out as a porterhouse. Mm -hmm. And so it is the oldest contiguously serving bar in New York City. It has been serving straight through Prohibition. Uh, back then in this neighborhood, nobody cared. Yeah. Um, and uh, hopefully we don't drop the ball. <laughs> little pressure. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit. 1794. Imagine! Around since Alexander Hamilton was practicing law just blocks away. Though, it's doubtful he ever came in, considering what we found out later. And for the bar itself, that date is pretty important. You see, New York taverns have been having a dispute for years about which one is oldest. So as it turns out, Bridge Cafe is second in age only to the San Francis Tavern in Lower Manhattan. What's more, its history includes a not-so-illustrious period that sets it apart from any of the others in the city. From the 1850s, and we know this from the New York census, from the 1850s to at least 1876, there was a brothel upstairs. Um, and I'll, I'll read this rather dramatically. It's one sentence, um, one sentence in the New York Times uh, 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 from, uh, what is the year? I think it's 1876. And it's 22 of the most repulsive types of degraded womanhood stood huddled together at the prisoner's bar says prisoner's bar. I don't know what that means. In the Tombs Police Court yesterday, uh, and these women were taken out of the following buildings, 275, 277, 277 and a half, and our claim to fame, 279 Water Street. In summer in its sordid past, the building has picked up some tenants who've refused to leave. Maybe a tragedy befell one of the prostitutes upstairs, or maybe it was a customer. But in any case, Bridge Cafe is said to be haunted Something which Adam himself can attest to. Night, I'm managing for the first time. I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I did have free beer in front of me, and one of my best friends from college lived up the block, and I called him down and said, hey, free beer, come on down. We locked up the whole restaurant. Everybody left. Great. I pour a beer. He pours a beer. He's sitting one side of the bar. I'm sitting on the back side of the bar. Before we drank, and the caveat, I have to tell you this, before we drank, we were totally sober, we heard footsteps. And we ran out of here so quickly, and I got chastised the next day for not locking up properly. Since then, the footsteps became so commonplace. The ghost, or whatever it is making the footsteps, is just one connection to its past. Another is the food and drink they serve. Typical taverns in the 17 and 1800s kept things simple, but fresh and local just like Bridge Cafe. Chef may not be in love with my description, but I would say super high-end comfort food. Okay. Well, given a nod to their roots, the dishes each feature unique twists on classic fare. For appetizers, we tried the deep-fried pork belly and the fried oysters, both chef recommendations and both outstanding. Then we moved on to the entrees. Honey lacquered duck breast, sitting atop a pecan and mushroom bread pudding, all surrounded by an onion and garlic confit, and balanced by the sweet tanginess of a dried fruit and fig compote. Fresh, sushi-grade pan-seared diver scallops, below that creamy goat cheese and cheddar grits, with a bacon and tomato jam and basil cream. A vegetarian plate featuring a strata bricovici made with roasted autumn vegetables, caramelized onions, a sweet mango and pear chutney, Coach Farms goat cheese, and finally, a curry spice spaghetti squash. And finally, their buffalo steak with a lingon berry sauce and house-made potato gnocchi. Buffalo steak from the Midwest. Mm, yeah. And it is just velvet. It's, it's velvet on a plate. It is amazing. My only caveat with buffalo is if you're a well-done person, go with anything else because it's so lean. Yeah. 
and you lose all its flavor. But if you're medium rare, medium rare, it is just lovely. Adam also has a special fondness for whiskey, bourbon and scotch, which is demonstrated through Bridge Cafe's extensive collection. We have 85 different bourbons. Yeah. So uh, 85 different single malts. Single malts, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, and single malts from India, Sweden, Japan, uh, Scotland, of course, Ireland. Um, our bourbons, about 35 different bourbons. While they don't really have a signature drink, Adam told us he made a wicked good old fashioned fashion that's actually my specialty and actually the bartenders will if I'm in the house I'll, I'll let Adam make it and the thing on that is if you like drinking them you'll learn how to make them oh yeah and it is one of my favorite drinks and so the old fashioned would be your number one recommended drink uh, as, in, as, as far as hard alcohol goes unless you're drinking it neat start with a packet and a half of sugar add a cherry an orange Little bitters. The fun part, muddle. That's the most enjoyable part of making this drink. We're also doing the Julia Childs method, which she actually did the work. She didn't just pull it out from under and go, here it is, muddled. <laughs> so we are actually muddling while we go and then has to not waste the fruit. Pour over the model. Really? Uh, I'm just doing this for show, but like I said, actually, when I do this for myself, that's how I do it. When I do it for customers, we're in a rush, so you just survive and do what you gotta do. Uh, in this case, that, that, that. For the most part, we really sell a lot of scotch, a lot of bourbon unaltered couple of ice cubes but when they see us drinking them yeah it's a messy beautiful thing that you get your vitamin c and your flavor give it a half a second and drink he was right that was the best old-fashioned we'd ever tried the drink is pretty fitting for bridge cafe first documented in hudson new york in 1806 so it's been around a while but it's also as refreshing as the day someone mixed it for the first time. It's a lot like this tavern, really. Serving customers continuously in one form or another since 1794. But giving us a refreshing and welcome experience both at the bar and at the table. The line boggles thinking of what might have gone down in the upstairs bedrooms and about who may have wandered through the doors and glanced at their reflections in the mirrors that are now over 200 years old. Who were they and what were they like? Were they pirates? Merchants or sailors from the nearby piers? Characters from our nation's history? Or were they just people, like you and me, who came in off the streets to just enjoy a drink? The beauty of Bridge Cafe is that it'll be around to let you find out for yourself.